Whether you prefer her as a villain or a hero, there is no question that Regina Mills is a badass. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 evil queen moments. I want her gone. Let's get rid of her. Let's be the family we were always meant to be, all of us. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the best moments of this character from the fairy tale inspired show Once Upon a Time. This box was made to hold something precious. And that's exactly what it's going to do. Number 10, when she makes her grand entrance. Sorry, I'm late. We're taking it all the way back to the beginning. Regina's appearance as the evil queen crashing Snow and Charming's wedding is epic. As the doors swing open and the crowd parts at her presence, the evil queen storms the castle like she owns the place. From this moment on, it's clear that the evil queen is someone to be feared. Soon, everything you love, everything all of you love, will be taken from you forever. She vows to destroy their lives and commits perhaps the worst offense of all, stealing the focus away from the bride. Hey! Number 9. When she tells the Charmings not to let Emma get rid of her magic. Emma and Regina's relationship has been rocky throughout the years. They're not always on the same side. But when Emma wanted to get rid of her magic after a few mishaps, Regina was the first in line to have her back. We're not talking about an old pair of Jimmy Choo's here. Tell me you're joking. Even Snow and Charming thought it might be a good idea for Emma to get rid of her magic. But Regina convincing them not to let her give up is exactly what makes her special. This could be the worst idea you've ever had. And you hired the Wicked Witch as your nanny. In a humbling and touching moment, Regina talks about her biggest regret, treating Henry like he was crazy for believing in the storybook, and how she doesn't want them to make the same mistakes she did. And I tried convincing him he was crazy, and that being normal would make things better. Number eight, when she saves Henry in the alternate universe. When the author teams up with Rumpelstiltskin and sends everyone into an alternate universe that rewrites the stories of all the heroes and villains, no one remembers who they really are. Regina is a bandit and Snow is evil, and everyone else is turned upside down. Henry is the only one left awake, and he is tasked with saving everyone all on his own. But as Rumpelstiltskin tries to kill Henry, Regina sacrifices herself to save him, even though she can't remember that he is her son. Even in an alternate universe, she feels such a powerful connection to him she would die for it. Why did you go into the church? I could have let you die. This time, Regina gets to be the hero. Number 7. When she reunites with her father. Regina has done a lot of bad things, but one of the worst was taking her own father's heart. I'm sorry. In order to cast the curse that brought everyone to Storybrooke, she needed to pay the price with the heart of the person she loved most. While in the underworld, Regina finds her father and apologizes for everything she has done. Daddy, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay, dear, it's okay, it's okay. On Regina's long road to redemption, this was certainly an important step. It's a beautiful and heart-wrenching moment that later leads to him being allowed to move on to a better place. After meeting the younger Henry and thanking him for being there for Regina when he couldn't. You take good care of her. <laughs> it's time for me to go. Daddy, no. Number six, when she says her famous last words. Do you have any last words? Yes, yes I do. The evil villain speech normally comes when the villain has the hero captured, and it seems she is about to win. But Regina is no ordinary villain. After successfully eluding them for a long time, Regina is finally captured by Snow White and Prince Charming, and sentenced to death for her crimes. As Regina begins to say her last words, it seems that she is remorseful. But they take a dramatic turn, into a speech about how she wishes she'd done more evil. 
Who else but the evil queen could have the dauntlessness to tell off her enemies even when facing certain death? And above all else, with every ounce of my being, I regret that I was not able to kill Snow White. Number 5. When she realizes she can write her own happy ending. So you don't want me writing anything? No. I already have everything I need. Regina searched for her happy ending for a long time. At first she thought it would come from ruining the happy endings of others. Then she thought maybe villains just don't get happy endings at all. He said I'm a villain. And that villains don't get happy endings. She even went so far as to try to force the author to change her ending in the storybook. But she eventually realized that she was the biggest hindrance to her own happiness, and decided to create her own story. I'm so tired of standing in the way of my own happiness. And I'm not going to do it anymore. She has always looked to outside sources to give her joy or blamed others for taking it away from her, but now accepts that it has to come from inside her. Robin isn't my happy ending. My happy ending is finally failing at home in the world. Number four, when she sends Emma and Henry to New York. I have to say goodbye to the thing I love most. Henry? I can never see him again. As Pan is about to drop yet another new curse on Storybrooke, Regina hatches a plan to undo her original curse and send everyone back to the enchanted forest before it hits. But as she knows all too well, magic always comes with a price. Henry isn't from the realm and therefore cannot return. So to save everyone, Regina makes the ultimate sacrifice and gives up her son. But really, what I want is for Henry to be happy. She sends Emma and Henry to New York with all new memories, so they would forget Storybrooke and believe that they'd always been together, knowing that he will never remember she was his mother. Now go. There isn't much time left. The curse will be here any minute. Number three, when she rejects Snow's surrender. I can have everything. <laughs> Regina might have become one of the show's best heroes, but she started out as a terrifying villain. After all the fighting and poor decisions she made, Snow decides to surrender to Regina. Upon ripping out Snow's heart, Regina sees that it is growing dark. And once you blacken your heart, it only grows darker and darker. She gives an amazing speech about how she doesn't have to ruin Snow because she's darkening her heart all on her own. Ruining Snow's happiness had been all Regina had ever wanted, but watching her destroy herself was even better. I don't need to destroy you, you're doing it to yourself. Number two, when she teams up with Lucy. And what's her next move? Well, what do you think? We're gonna give your mother and father the happy ending they deserve. In this season seven curse, even Henry, the truest believer himself, is stuck not knowing who he really is. But not to worry, there is a new believer in town. Uh, hello? Hi, are you Henry Mills? Much like her father before her, Lucy was all alone in her attempts to break the curse and save her family. That is until Regina, also known as Ronnie, finally wakes up and remembers who she really is. So when Lucy comes to her desperate for help, this time around, Regina jumps at the chance to team up with her and lets her know that she's not alone anymore. She's ready to help save Henry and break the curse, with a pair of walkie-talkies and a brand new operation. And we're gonna start exactly like your father did, with a set of walkie-talkies and an operation name. Any suggestions? Operation Hyacinth. First thing my dad gave my mom. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. What are you doing? This is what the world will see. Excellent. About as regal as a potato. I love you, Henry.
Number one, when she shares her heart. I'm going to do what we never could. I'm going to be brave for both of us and choose love over hate. Regina had been fighting the inner turmoil between her light and dark sides for a long time. But that inner turmoil becomes a very formidable outer turmoil when she uses Dr. Jekyll's serum to separate Regina from the evil queen. She quickly finds out that ridding herself of her darkness would not be so easy. After battling the evil part of herself, Regina realizes that the light and the dark are both a part of her. Rather than killing the evil queen, she makes the selfless decision to take back some of her hate and share some of her love, giving them both a real chance at a happy ending. And now I love myself. Which means so should you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.